Well, uh, energy resilience has a lot of, you know, a broad scope, but really we're talking about any interruptions or um, uh, challenge in your energy system. So uh, conventionally we think about uh, interruptions like uh, power outages from storms, from aging and failing equipment, or even, you know, unfortunately from uh, terrorism domestically. Uh, but energy resilience goes beyond that. We can also think about energy price spikes, particularly as we are using more and more natural gas, uh, energy will uh, fluctuate more in price. We can also think about uh, potential regulations uh, from the state or federal government is changing the energy system. All that requires a, a resilient energy system uh, to pr protect our uh, investments. Okay, that seems clear enough. But well, it seems like we're hearing the term a lot more uh, these days. Why, why is that? Why does it seem more important than it was, say, five years ago? Well, uh, our relationship with energy is ever-changing. We're using energy more for everything, whether it be shipping goods or you know, connectivity through your smartphone. Kind of the juice needs to stay on more than ever for, for businesses and for people. Uh, but there's a problem. Uh, we're, we're, we're feeling the squeeze. Uh, since 1990, the United States uses 25% more energy uh, than we did back then, but we've invested in energy transmission infrastructure 30% less. 70% uh, of the electric utility transmission and distribution uh, network in this country is 25 years old or older. Uh, so there are problems coming our way when it comes to keeping the lights on. Yeah, we have some needs. Yeah. So how's the market reacting to these needs? Well, pretty well, actually. Um, uh, government entities, Department of Energy, uh, states, states like uh, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, Maryland, they're developing programs to provide grants for distributed energy and microgrids. Um, companies are starting to actually quantify uh, potential risk of energy outages and, and monetize that. Um, so they're, they're doing a better job at reacting and most importantly, uh, the financial markets. Uh, which we're talking about here at the Bloomberg New Energy Finance Summit, financial markets are developing new tools and resources to help finance distributed energy that's taking away some of those final barriers to good energy decisions. So it sounds like there's a multi-sectoral uh, focus on resiliency in general. And there uh, has to be. And let's talk about Hitachi in particular. How is Hitachi positioned to address energy resiliency issues uh, for its clients? Well, Hitachi has a, a global focus on social innovation. Uh, we're, we have many, many different companies. Uh, I work for just one of them. But uh, we are working together through kind of a convergence strategy to bring our technical products, our IT solutions, our management consulting all together to try to help meet our clients' needs around energy resilience. And why is Hitachi playing in this space? <laughs> well, um, uh, Hitachi, like everybody else, is looking to make money. Uh, you know, deployment of... Um, of distributed generation for microgrids was about an $8.3 billion industry in 2013. Uh -huh. By 2020, it's expected to be a $40 billion industry. Uh, in just the next six years alone, uh, deployment of distributed, uh, distributed energy is expected to increase sixfold. Uh, so Hitachi Consulting wants to play in that growing market, but at the same time, uh, our clients are asking us for this. You know, we have long-term partnerships with mm -hmm. our clients, and they're looking to us to help them uh, address these solutions better. Well, it sounds like an exciting space, and uh, Hitachi sounds like a player that needs to be there. Brian Levitt, thank you for filling us in on Hitachi and the resiliency space. Thank you, Stephen.